Hello everyone, in today's tutorial I'm going to showcase you how to make Kali Linux bootable USB drive on Windows system. So as a first step, let's download application called Rufus. This application actually allows us to make USB bootable drive from any type of uh, operating system as long as we have installation media. So to download the Rufus application, we can navigate to rufus.ie webpage, which is the official website of this software. And let's download the application to our PC locally. So as a next step, we need to download the Kali Linux installation media. So let's navigate to official Kali website, which is kali.org. From there, we can navigate to the download uh, section where we will be presented with multiple options of Kali installation media, depending on the desired platform where we would like to install this operating system. Since we would like to make bootable USB drive for Kali Linux, so let's choose as our platform live boot option. Then we are presented with a couple of other options um, if we would like to install this software as a 64-bit, 32-bit or on ARM64 system. So I would highly encourage you to download the recom Kali recommended uh, installation media. Let's download this on our uh, computer to local drive. And depending on the uh, destination server and our connectivity speed, this can take a couple of minutes or just a couple of uh, seconds. So let's wait till the download finish. So now we are ready to create a bootable Kali USB drive with persistent options. So let's launch our Rufus application and let's select our device on which we would like to make as a USB bootable drive with Linux, Linux Kali operating system. This is important step so that if you have multiple drive connected to your PC, so that you don't overwrite setting on one of the uh, uh, hard drive that you are currently using and store some data. So I'm going to make my one terabyte a portable external drive as a bootable with Kali Linux operating system. So that's why I choose the one terabyte hard drive. And then we can select the installation, Kali Linux installation media that we downloaded in the previous step. After this, the, the next important option is to select the persistent partition size. The, this is up to your preference, whether it is like a couple of uh, gigabytes or uh, much more. Um, uh, the system or application will allow you to select the only maximum possible persistent partition size that is available depending on the total size of the hard drive or USB uh, drive because it um, it first allocates specific size for Kali as a uh, Linux operating system so where it will live and the rest could be actually used as a persistent partition drive which will store our Kali Linux operating system configuration that we are going to make to the system or any files that we are going to create over there and so on and so forth. And those data will be sitting on this persistent partition uh, drive option uh, and will be remained across um, uh, reboots of the Kali operating uh, system. Then as an extern, you can choose your customized volume drive. So let's call it Kali Linux with persistence. And then we can start the operation. The application will make, will extract the data from the installation media and will make the USB drive or portable uh, external drive as a bootable. So this could take a couple of minutes. So let's uh, wait till this finish and then we can resume.
Now we can reboot uh, our system and boot the Kali uh, Linux from our USB or portable uh, uh, external drive. Uh, during the boot, uh, boot option, depending on the BIOS version like mo motherboard, uh, you, you might have different keystroke that allows you to select from which drive you would like to actually boot the operating system. So read your BIOS option carefully. In my case, it is F11. So let me press F11 so that we can enter the boot uh, boot device option uh, preference so we can select my external one terabyte drive which is uh, scan this extreme pro hard drive and let's boot from this drive as you can see it uh, present as or grid as the kali uh, group menu option and uh, let's choose live system with usb persistent option and let's put inside the operating system this will take a couple of uh, seconds or minute till we get launched automatically to the operating system now which we can customize and our setting should be uh, persistent across uh, system reboot so let's have a look. So after the Linux system actually boots, uh, I would recommend to you to change the password to secure the operating system, set up the Wi-Fi or customize any type of configuration. For example, I was doing configuration of my mouse because not all buttons has been recognized. So let me show you the setup of the Wi-Fi. So first of all, uh, when we boot to the system, if my only connection was for the Wi-Fi, obviously it won't be automatically recognized. So the internet connectivity by default doesn't work in my case. If you are on the uh, cable, Ethernet cable connected, um, so on the wired network, it might, it might be automatic because the HCP will pick it up. But in my case, the internet is not working. So let's launch our uh, network uh, config uh, manager and let's add the um, Wi-Fi connection. And depending on the security of your Wi-Fi, you will need to fill in appropriate the SSID and Wi-Fi security options. Assuming I filled in the correct information, I will be successfully connected to my Wi-Fi network. So if I refresh the connection to the Google, for example, website, you see it start to work. I can also validate my connectivity by doing sudo apt-get update, which will try to fetch the latest uh, software packages from the official um, software, uh, Kali software repository systems. Now, uh, let me move to the desktop directory in the command line and let's create the file that will be called test persistent drive. So you see it appear automatically on my desktop. And this is just for test purposes and so that we can validate and make sure that our uh, Kali Linux is really set with persistent drive option and that this file and our Wi-Fi configuration will remain upon I reboot the system. So let's reboot the system and now again we'll need to enter the, the boot menu option to select the right uh, hard drive or if we would like to consistently boot to this uh, operating system we can change the default boot uh, device. And again, from the group menu, we will choose a uh, live system with USB persistent option. And 
can use it after we boot up to the system. The, on the desktop, you still see the test persistent drive file that has been created uh, previously. And also the Wi-Fi connection has uh, remained connected so and configured. So we didn't lose the config settings. And if I navigate to google.com, the connection works. So this concludes this uh, demonstration um, tutorial and see you in the next one.